you don't have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, late in the week, I had a change of plans, and uh, here, I just got it in before the deadline on the bulletin, uh, but the Lord really spoke to me. Uh, it was Wednesday night after church, and I was laying in bed, and uh, he gave me this title uh, to the message, and he gave me this outline, and so we changed, and next week uh, I will be preaching on uh, Luke chapter 2, uh, the traditional a Christmas story. But today I want to talk to you about uh, Christmas love. And we, when we think of Christmas time, uh, folks, it is a time of love. It is time of gift giving. It is a time where family comes together. It is time when we worship together and worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And folks, in this world today, there is just so much hate. And you just turn on the news, and it's sometimes just so depressing. And I think during the month of December, uh, everyone is thinking about Christmas. And folks, Christmas is about Jesus. And Jesus and God is about love. Yes, we should love folks, uh, you know, 12 months of the year. But there's something about the emphasis at this time uh, that it makes it, to me, a little easier. And you can come up with things uh, that we can do for others and ways to serve others in Christian love. So let me give you the outline if you have the bulletin and want to follow along. Number one, the importance of God's love. The importance of God's love. Folks, it's important. Number two, the character of God's love. If you want to know what love is, you look at God and you look at Jesus. You look at their character. And I'm just going to be honest, folks. There are times that I'm not lovable and I have trouble loving, okay? We're all human, okay? You'll run into somebody that just kind of, I'll, I'll pick a phrase that I've been told, gets on your last nerve, okay? I didn't make that up. I heard that, okay? And folks, it's during those times that we get most challenged to love, you see? And, and God and Jesus uh, shows us that, and we'll be looking at that today. And number three, the perfection of God's love. Folks, I am telling you, there was only one perfect man that lived here on earth, and that was Jesus Christ our Lord. And we can say this, well, I'm not perfect, but you know what that is, folks? That's an excuse, okay? I'm not perfect, I'm telling you, and you know I'm not perfect, okay? But I want to strive for perfection. And in my spiritual life, in my walk, daily walk, I want to be more like Jesus. And folks, he is a great example for us to follow. You know, our world is seriously, seriously confused by the word love. What may be true to some could be something different to others. The Bible teaches us that there are three types of love. Eros love is selfish love. It's about me, and it's about what I want. And it is very common in our society in which we live. Phileo love is friendship. And, you know, everybody has friends, okay? And it's, it's being buddies with something, someone. But God's love is agape love, and Jesus' love is agape love, which is a sacrificial love, willing to die for someone. God's love and Jesus' love uh, was like no other. The Bible encourages us to love others the way God and Jesus loves us. Let's look at this beautiful chapter 13 in the book of Corinthians, often called the love chapter. I know no better time to share God's love with others than at Christmas time. And Jesus told his disciples a new commandment, and it's found in John 13, verse 34. I'm just going to read this as a launching place. And this is Jesus' word. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another. Uh, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my, my disciples if you have love for one another. 
Folks, we are disciples of Christ. And I understand we're not the original 12. We are followers of Jesus Christ. And he says we should love others the way that Jesus loved others. So let's look in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and let's look at God's uh, love and Christmas love. Verse 1, and by the way, Paul is writing to the church at Corinth here. If you remember, we did the Lord's Supper last week, and it got down to the last part of chapter 11, and he basically said, some of you are not loving even people in your own church. Okay, you bring food, they had a love feast, kind of like our potluck, all right? And I'm telling you, uh, this week I have felt, you know, I fell off the wagon, and this week the wagon ran me over, okay? (laughs) We had three dinners here at the church, and I'm just telling you, it was, I mean, they were great, but for a diet, it was awful, all right? And I've already asked the Lord to forgive me, so don't even think it, all right? Then in chapter 12, Paul discusses nine gifts of the Spirit. And you will always also see in Romans chapter 12, there are seven gifts of the Spirit listed. So there's 16 of these gifts that that he speaks of. And what was happening in the Corinthian church, they were uh, saying that some gifts are more important than others. And folks, that is not true. Every one has a spiritual gift, and your spiritual gift is important as anyone else's. It is used for God's glory. It is used to edify the church. And some people see me as my gift of prophecy, and that prophecy is not foretelling the future. It is preaching the Word of God. But I'm telling you, those who And and here's the deal. If you do nursery duty and you watch those kids for two hours, you are blessed by God. Why? There's no crying babies in our sanctuary. It is a gift that God uses. There is no ministry more important than another. And that's what Paul is trying to say. Paul is saying that love is more important than spiritual gifts. Because if we have the love of God in us, we will use our spiritual gift for His glory. Not to cause attention to ourselves, okay? I mean, I would love uh, for Steve and I sometime to just sing a duet together and for some reason, uh, Phil's voice got inside of me. And I just sing, and I, I mean, but I'm telling you, if we did, some of you would walk out of here. You would say, that is terrible, okay? But again, folks, don't, every gift is important. But if we don't use the gift in love, we are missing the point. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but not have love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And he lists five gifts here in this first part that we will be reading in verses 1 through 3. And these are important gifts, the gift of tongues. And I do not think he's talking about speaking in tongues. I think it's languages here. And, And there are people, I know a person that can speak eight languages. Now, folks, I still have trouble with the English language. I'm half Hispanic, and the only words I know in Spanish are taco, burrito, enchilada, Uh, all right? I mean, I don't have the gift of languages. My my teacher in uh, 10th grade, I was taking Spanish, and they just said, are you sure you're Spanish? Are you sure you have? And folks, what he's talking about is those uh, men and those who speak who speak and preach and prophesy and teach. And he says, if I, it, it, it would be like me. And it happened one time, folks. There was a guy that went through a church that I, in the past, and when he got up, it was almost like he was mad. Okay, it's one thing to pound on the pulpit, but just to yell for 30, 40 minutes, you know, 
everybody just kind of looked at him. Like, what is this? Folks, I am telling you, we need to teach in love. We need to preach in love. And there's some times to get excited. There's some time to get excited, you know, emphasis on things. But if we teach, and uh, I, I was thinking of the first preacher that really made an influence on my life. I was 20 years old, and I just, uh, reded or I just no, I hadn't rededicated my life, but I had come back to church, and I started listening to this man called Adrian Roger. I was 20 years old, and I thought, that dude sounds like God. If there ever was a voice, it was the voice of God, I thought it was him. And then when I'd listen to him, I'm telling you, it just flowed. He was eloquent. He was, he was spellbounding at times. But even if I am that way, if I leave love out, what is he saying? A sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. All right? I'm telling you, uh, I won't say. Someone in my family had the idea of getting one of our grandkids a drum for Christmas. <laughs> And I thought that I thought Christmas morning was never going to be finished. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Just banging and banging and banging. And I love my, uh, you know, my grandchildren. But it's just noise, folks. And the drum, nothing wrong with the drummer, nothing wrong with the drum. I'm simply saying that's what he's saying. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have faith, these are the ones he's talking about, the gift of preaching, the gift of understanding Scripture, which is mysteries. That would be like teaching revelation of knowledge. And that is not IQ, folks. It's knowledge of the Word of God. And though I have faith, which we all have faith, some faith is stronger than others, so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. You can have these gifts, but if you don't do them in love, you're missing the point. Look at verse 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profiteth me nothing. Now, he's getting real serious here, folks. Uh, we have a food closet, and man, I love our food closet. We give every day that we are open. We give a basket. And we give food away all the time. And folks, we give that out of love. But this one gets to me, to have my body burned. And then, you know what I thought of when I read this earlier in the week? I'm thinking of Stephen. When Stephen just preached the Word of God, and the guy, guy standing there said his face looked like an angel while being stoned. I'm asking you, could you do that? That's what he's saying. And why were they stoning him? Because he was simply giving the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he even quoted Jesus before he died, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Folks, people are going to hurt you. People are going to hurt you deeply. And part of love is unconditional. See, God's love for us is unconditional. Our love sometimes is conditional. I'll love you if you love me. I'll be nice to you if you be nice to me. And so Paul here is talking about God's love and the importance of that in our lives. 1 John 4, hold your finger there and go to 1 John 4. 1 John 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another. He tells us, John tells us to love one another. For love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Three times in this scripture, he tells us God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin. 
Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's how much God loves you. That's how much love God gives you. And when we receive that kind of love from God, we need to love God that way and we need to love others that way. Folks, you can have the most, you know, cherished gifts in your life. You can be one of the best speakers there are, but if you do not do it out of love, I am telling you, people are not going to listen. So the importance of God's love. And now let's look at the character of God's love. The character. Look in verse 4. Love suffereth long. What is that? Love hath patience. Well, I would not get an A in that court. All right? I have a lot more patience than I used to have, but I need more patience in my life. Why? Because I need to show God's love through being patient. I'm amazed when folks go into the hospital. What are you called when you're in a hospital? You are called a patient. And it takes patience to be in a hospital. You push the button, 30 minutes later, nobody comes. All right? And folks, how you react when that person comes into the room, think about that. How we act. You may be able to witness to that person, or you may not if you burn a bridge or two. He's saying, love suffereth long. And love is kind. Kindness is just being nice. Okay? We need more kind people in this world. We need the kind that if there's one chair left and there's two people, the argument be shaken. No, you sit down. No, you sit down. It happened to me just the other day. A lady uh, come in to the waiting room and I got up. And then another man said, no, you sit here. And I, and I said, no, you sit here. I mean, this guy was, was trying to get this lady to sit down, and she wouldn't sit down. Finally, what I did was I just moved to the door like I was going to leave, and I stopped, and she got my chair, and then I just waited. for the, Folks, I am telling you, people want to know that you care, and you can show care by being kind to people. Men, young men, open the door for somebody. Students, say yes, sir. Say yes, ma'am. I'm just telling you, folks, there are ways to show kindness. When somebody drops something, I'd rather have two people hit their heads getting it than both not, nobody and just looking at that person. And it's like mothers. You know what I found out about mothers? They can carry pounds of stuff. I look at moms and they're carrying diaper bags and purses and umbrellas and all this. And something hits the floor and everybody just looked at them. Folks, kindness needs to be everywhere. Two things that are positive. Now he gets into the, the two do's are uh, be patient and be kind. Now he has six don'ts. <laughs> all right. Love does not envy. Folks, envy will not promote love. Jealousy will not promote love. Like I said, I'd love to sing like Steve, but it's just not there. So what I do, I make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Okay? We should not be jealous of one another's gift. We should not. I mean, when somebody does a good job, you need to tell them. Folks, we are so blessed with musicians and soloists and a choir. There's so many churches that don't even have choirs anymore. You want to get blessed, you come back tonight at 6 o'clock, and I guarantee you, you'll be blessed. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love does not brag. Okay? It's kind of like the husband. He comes in and he bought an expensive gift. And the wife just says, that is so nice of you. 
that that was expenses. Yeah, it was five hundred and thirty eight dollars. He was bragging on what he paid for something. How do you think that made the wife feel? Folks, they're worthless. I got news for you, folks. Men, wives are priceless. I'm telling you, I, I'm just telling you, I'd hate to serve and I'd hate to live without Lori. I just, folks, I, I know I could do it with God's help, but I'm simply saying, do not brag. Is not puffed up. Stubborn. Okay? Love is not stubborn. All right? Does not behave itself rudely. Be careful. And sometimes things just pop into my head, Steve. You know that. Cody knows that. All right? And I, I promise you I'm just trying to be funny. But every once in a while, somebody will look at me, somebody, and I thought, oh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> and I, you know, it's not off color or anything. It's just goofy stuff. It's my past, folks. Okay, but don't be rude about it. Does not seek its own. I have to have my way. Love is not that way, folks. That's why there's division in churches. That's why Paul is writing them. It's over somebody that didn't get their way. It's not provoked. Thinks no evil. That means you think the good. You give them the benefit of the doubt does not rejoice in iniquity, which is sin. Never okay sin. Always, always speak against sin. But then he gives five things about love and characters of love, but rejoiceth in truth. Oh, folks, uh, you know, when we read the Word of God, and I know sometimes it just pierces our heart, but folks, you're not going to change if you do not have love in your heart for the Word of God. When my life says one thing and the Bible says something else, I need to change my life, not my interpretation of the Bible. The Bible is the absolute authority in a Christian's life. But rejoice in truth. Bear all things. Folks, we can take a lot. We can take a lot. We can go through a lot. Be resilient. Love people, even those that don't love you back. Still love them. Why? Because that's exactly what Jesus did. Believes all things. Everybody needs hope. Everybody needs belief in their life. Hopes all things and endure all things. Folks, we can go through anything with the love of God in our heart. And folks, during Christmas, we need to be showing this love. It is a great time to show the character of God's love. 1 John 4 again. 1 John 4.12. 1 John 4.12. Go with me. The Bible says, No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and His love has been perfected in us. And I like the little song, he's still working on me. All right? But folks, don't settle. Don't quit growing in the Lord. Don't cr quit uh, maturing uh, spiritually. Grow in the Lord. By this we know we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. When the Holy Spirit tells you to do something, do it. Do it. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son as the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God abides in Him and He in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. For God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in Him. Oh, folks, the character of God is love. The last thing I want you to see in Scripture is the importance of God's love, the character of God's love, and the perfection of God's love. I love the next three words. Love never fails. You know what you could plug in right there? God never fails. God has never let you down. 
God doesn't always give you everything you want in the time that you want it. But we don't know what God is thinking. He can see in the future. He can see what we need. And folks, His love never fails. The why word, the why word. We use the why word all the time. Why is God doing this? What have I done? And we have to understand it's not why. And, and Brother Phil said this, and it has just permeated ever since he said it. We shouldn't ask why. We should say how. How can I use this situation for the glory of God? God has a purpose and a plan. What won't kill you, a man told me, will make you stronger. God's trying to strengthen you with things that are in your life. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, he's going back over the gifts again. They will fail. Where there are tongues, they will, they will cease. And again, I believe that the gift of tongues, all right, was an apostolic gift. Okay, for that time and that place. Whether it's knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. Folks, we don't know the whole story. We don't know what God's thinking. We don't know what God's up to. He doesn't just, you know, talk from heaven and tell us, hey, you need to do this. Folks, we got to spend time in prayer. We got to spend time in God's word. We got to spend time seeking God faith. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away uh, with. And folks, that which is perfect has already come, and his name is Jesus Christ. We need to love like Jesus loved. And do you know when we'll be perfect? I know what you're thinking. Oh, Brother Mike, you'll never be perfect. You're wrong. <laughs> One of two reasons. When I die, when I lay my head on that pillow for the last time, I'll be perfect. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And if it's not in death, it's going to be at the rapture of the church. Folks, when I step inside the doors of heaven, the Bible tells us we will be like Jesus. Steve, I won't tease you anymore. I, I can't tease you anymore. And Steve, the deal with Steve is, I, I had three sisters. I always wanted a brother. And he is the brother that I never had. And he tells me a story about his brothers. All right? So I just want to make him feel at home. <laughs> Verse 10, but when that which is perfect has come, that which is at part will be done away with. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, and I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. Folks, there's a reason babies can't make decisions. Babies can't feed themselves. Children, same thing. They don't make major decisions. And he's saying here, some of you in the church at Corinth, are acting like children. Quit it. Quit acting like, grow up. Be spiritually mature in Christ. Verse 12, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Oh, folks, I can't wait to see my Savior face to face. And you know what, my, you know what I believe, and this is just a personal opinion, I believe when I get to heaven, what happened on earth I'm not even going to mention. Not a word. It will mean nothing then. All that is gone. Everything is new. No sin, no death, no crying, no pain. Because I've had people ask me, what about if somebody's not up there that I think ought to be up there? Folks, I believe God has a way of erasing your finite mind. Okay? And when you get there, there's only going to be one word for heaven. It is perfect. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these 
is love. Oh, folks, we need to love God. We need to love our families. We need to love God's church. And we need to love our neighbors. Matthew chapter 5. This is going to be hard. I'm just warning you. It's like sitting in the dentist chair. You're going to have a root canal. You're fixing to get a spiritual root canal here, okay? Matthew 5, verse 43. You have heard it said, this is Jesus' word, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Isn't that what the world says? That's exactly what it said. Uh, and, and hate your enemy. But I say to you, I love, there's seven but I said, and we're going to cover every one of these uh, in, in just a few weeks. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those that hate you. And pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you. Uh, folks, you want to reflect the love of God? You do this scripture. Because see, when somebody hurts us, our natural tendency is to want to hurt them. When somebody talks about us, our fleshly tendency is to talk about them. And folks, we fall short. I am in this category. We fall short in time. We don't love people the way God loves people. Why? That you may be the sons of, God, sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes the sun rise on evil and on the good, since rain on the just and the unjust. Folks, sometimes it's just life. It's just life. What are accidents? When you think of car accidents, it's an accident. Nobody meant to do it, but it's just life. It's like cancer. I'm telling you, I'm a cancer survivor, and my heart goes out. Just because you have cancer doesn't mean God is, is punishing you with that. It's a life lesson, and we can go through anything with God and our family and our church family with us. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. He's talking about lost people here. That's the way the world is. And if you greet your brethren only, what, more, what do you do more than others? Even the tax collectors do so. Verse 48, therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father who is in heaven is perfect. Folks, God's love is perfect. And he sent his son. You say, what's this got to do with Christmas? The perfect gift he sent in a virgin birth and in Jesus Christ our Lord. Perfect gift. And I'm telling you, if you're here today, I understand we all like to unwrap gifts. But the best gift you could receive during this Christmas season, is the gift of salvation. Amen. Inviting Jesus Christ to come into your life. Father, thank you for this day. and God, I thank you for Christmas love. And God, I pray that during this Christmas season that we will just show the love of God to people around us. God, we've got 10 days. 10 days. And God, I pray that we would just challenge ourselves to love people the way you love people, to bless people the way you bless people, to encourage people the way you encourage people. And God, I pray that you would just perfect your love in us. God, nobody's arrived spiritually. Nobody does the right thing every time. But God, I thank you for forgiveness. I thank you that you are a model of love. And God, I pray if there's one here that doesn't know you today, today would be their day of salvation. God, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. And God, help us to love others, even the unlovable, even the mean, even those who hurt us. God, help us to pray for them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?